Good evening, everybody. We're continuing the meaning of love, um, biblically speaking, and this is part two. And last week, we talked about what is love, and, and we talked about what Paul said about love, um, and, and pretty much, um, love is so indefinable that um, we, we, we kind of moved on to love God and love your neighbor. So, so this week, the love your neighbor, um, love your enemy, um, very similar situations. And I, last week, during the week, it just kept coming to me, love your neighbor, who is your neighbor? And, and so immediately what came to mind was the parable of the good Samaritan. And so, uh, so we're going to we're going to start off tonight with that parable and it is as you see here Jesus uh and and I have become more and more aware of the fact that if you think about all of the things that Jesus taught and did the parables um they're all about love and we've never quite we've never quite looked at them that way, but um, but tonight we're going to use the parable of the Good Samaritan uh, to show uh, how Jesus demonstrated love, and uh, to show uh, who who is my neighbor because it's. Um, it's really debatable in, in a lot of folks' minds as to who's my neighbor and who is my enemy. Okay, so we're just gonna read this, um, <clears throat> read, read the scripture, and then we will pick it apart and talk about it. So Luke 10, 25 to 29. And behold, a scribe stood up to test him. And he said, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written, what is written in the law? How do you read it? He answered, saying to him, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said to him, you spoke the truth. Do this and you shall live. But as the scribe wanted to justify himself, he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? All right, now. Let's look at these, this first passage here. Um, it's a scribe who asked the question of Jesus. And remember it said to test Jesus. And why? <clears throat> okay, let, let's figure out who the scribes were first. The scribes were among the few in the ancient Near East who could read and write. And... Um, and they are uh, they are the the people the men uh, that that transcribed uh, many of the books of the Bible. Um, the authors would have the scribes write it down. Okay, and the scribes were very much aligned with the Pharisees and the other authorities in Jerusalem. Okay, that meant, okay, they followed the law strictly. 
And the scribe, of course, was very sure of himself. Um, and said, well, you know, I can't keep all those commandments. I've done that all my life. And that's much the same as we do today with the Ten Commandments. And we say, oh, well, I'm not violating any of those Ten Commandments. I'm good. So that's kind of where the scribe was at. And um, and he was he was relying on the law that originated in the Old Testament, Leviticus 19.18, that said, love your neighbor as yourself. But back then, and even up to the time of Jesus, which the scribe was trying to get at, is that it 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 only meant back then that you would love those, I, I say those of the Hebrew tribes, uh, but those of the religion um, there, there in Judah, and that was their that was their concept, in spite of the fact that that there was the law in Leviticus and some other passages that may have indicated otherwise, but um, we need to keep that in mind when we're when we're reading the rest of this parable, and also. Um, and we're talking about loving your enemies, and we go, well, who is your enemy? Well, it, think about this. The scribe actually was an enemy to Jesus. The scribes and the Pharisees were constantly trying to test Jesus, trying to catch him uh, in saying something against the law or whatever. And so the scribe essentially was an enemy to Jesus. And um, though Jesus didn't treat the scribe as, as an enemy, um, and Jesus didn't treat anybody as an enemy, actually. Uh, but uh, in order to in order to answer the scribe's question, um, Jesus didn't come out and, and say, well, your neighbor is says da, 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 da. That was not his way. And so, and, and it was also his way of handling the situation so that there was no enmity or anything be, between. So what did he do? He relied on this parable. So keep this in mind as we read the rest of the parable. Uh, because it will cast a slightly different light on the way we usually uh, teach or learn the, the parable. All right. And so the scripture goes on. Jesus said to the scribes. Okay. So he, he was addressing the scribe, but there were other people there too. But he was answering that question. Who is who, who is my neighbor? That's what the scribe had asked. All right, so there was a man who went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and bandits attacked him and robbed him and beat him and left him with little life remaining in him and they went away. And it chanced a priest was going down that road and he saw him and passed on. And likewise, a Levite came and arrived at that place and saw him and passed on. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where <clears throat> he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he came to him and bound up his wounds and poured on them wine and oil. And he put him on his own ass and brought him to the inn and took care of him. And in the morning, he took out two pennies and gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him and whatever you spend more, when I return, I will give it to you. Now, this is Luke, so. Who, therefore, of these three, 
as it appears to you, became neighbor to him who fell into the hands of the bandits. And the scribe said, the one who had compassion on him. Jesus said to him, you go also and do likewise. So th this parable is also, um, well, I don't know. A a a anyway, we have to remember when Luke, Luke, the gospel of Luke, uh, Luke, Luke's uh, writings or his interpretations here um, were not because he was present. He he was not he was not present during the lifetime and the events that, of Jesus. Okay, and so his writings are based on a collection of <coughs> whatever uh, whatever stories were passed down, uh, whatever whatever was uh, written in scrolls or whatnot. So we we have to we just have to remember that about Luke. But th this is a very good uh, example for what we're looking at. Okay, now, I would be remiss if, <clears throat> if, I, if I didn't put this in here, all right, and you notice it said in the scriptures that, that um, they were going down the road to Jericho. And notice on the map that Jericho is north of Jerusalem, yet they say that they were going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Well, just in our in in our um, well, the normal understanding is if you're going north, you're going up, and if you're going south, you're going down. But not so when it pertains to Jerusalem. Always you are going down from Jerusalem or up to Jerusalem, no matter what direction you're coming from. And that's because Jerusalem is on a is on a hill. And so it's it's just um I just wanted to mention that because it does get confusing if you look at a map as to why you would go down to Jericho when it's north of Jerusalem. Okay. So, no. Scripture says the priest came along and walked right on by. Why? Because of the law. The law for priests said, the Lord said to Moses, speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say to them, there shall none of you defile himself by mourning for the dead among his people. And this mourning here really would mean taking care of them uh, and uh, going near them and more than likely touching the body. And so that was strictly forbidden according to the law. And then if we jump down to verse 11, neither shall he go near any dead body nor defile himself by mourning even for his father or his mother. So very strict, very strict rules and the priest and the law, there, 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 there was no, there was no love. There was no compassion in the law. That's the way, that's the way it was. The priest went on by. Never, and it would never have occurred to him to have compassion and help this man because of these strict rules. Okay, now let's go to the Levite. All right. Uh, the Levite was of the same tribe, okay, because the priests were, were um, the, the priests, the priestly order was that of the Levites. The priests all came from the tribes of the Levites. Okay. And so so we have the priest, and now we have just a Levite person, man, more than likely. All right. 
And so, so he is, uh, he is bound by some laws, but not nearly as strict as the priest. So here, here's what, here's what he was bound by as he walked past the dead body. He who touches the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days. He shall purify himself by sprinkling with the water on the third day, and on the seventh day he shall be clean. But if he does not purify himself by sprinkling on the third day, then on the seventh day he shall not be clean. Whosoever touches the body of any man who is dead and does not purify himself by sprinkling defiles the tabernacle of the Lord and that person shall be cut off from Israel because the water of purification was not sprinkled upon him. He shall be unclean. His uncleanness is yet with him. Now, here again, we have the strict, we, we have the law, um, and we we have the, the strictness of the law, but no love, no compassion in the law. Now this man, um, the Levite, all right, he he really did have a choice because, okay, if he had touched the man, um, then he would have been unclean, and he he would have just had to go through the ritual of purifying himself. And so technically, he could have, um, he he could have helped the man. But the key point here is that that the Compassion, love was not taught in 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 the law. It, it just wasn't. The law was the law, and that's what you went by. Whether you know, and it it just didn't have love and compassion. And if you think about this, that's why that's why Jesus came. And you you hear that Jesus came to fulfill the the law okay and fulfill all right let's go back to leviticus love your neighbor okay well nobody no basically they basically they didn't i think we did this last week basically they didn't even observe that um hardly at all within their own um their their own uh family or or ancestors okay and and then as the years went on, uh, in Jesus' time, the um, uh, the 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 Jewish religion, the authorities, the Pharisees and whatnot, the Sadducees, uh, they 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 were very well off. The religion had been established, and they had their ritual, their ritualistic laws that they followed. Da 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 da. But they really weren't following. Leviticus 19:18 lo love your neighbor. And uh and so that's what we have to remember what that's why in my mind the Old Testament is so important because because you you get an understanding of what Jesus was trying to do. He was trying to do the spirit of the law which which is needed um in in order to in order to establish uh, love, compassion, and and peace on earth. So, anyway, but that's 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 just an example of why um, why they passed up uh, the poor man who had been robbed and attacked. Uh, okay, so now remember, Jesus is mainly addressing the scribe because it's the scribe that asked the question, who is my neighbor? Now, but let's take a look at what uh, some, some things about the Samaritans. Now, the Samaritans were, were enemies of Israel. Israel is the one that made them the enemy. Uh, they, the Samaritans, uh, the reason that Israel did not like the Samaritans and they were enemies is because um, a number of years uh, back, the Samaritans 
had broken off from the religion, the, the, the standard Jewish religion, and established their own. Okay, and that religion, yes, they did still follow a modified version of the Torah. All right, and I don't don't know how modified it was, but uh, but it was um, it was well, their Torah you'll see seemed to include love and compassion. Anyway, so so we have that. And we have the scribe there waiting to hear the hero of the story uh, <clears throat> as to who who helped this man. And he was still, the scribe was still thinking, wait a minute, you know, who's my neighbor? When Jesus popped this up, oh, the Samaritan. So um, Jesus said, basically, well, it's the Samaritan that helped. And of course, the scribe, it would be, <laughs> if you could get into the mind of the scribe, uh, it would be, um, well, it would be interesting because the, the scribe was hanging on to that, that um, uh, the law where your neighbor is, is just your, it's just your people of your own faith, maybe whatever religion. So that's what you have to keep in mind um, with with this parable. And so, what basically it's it's the law <coughs> versus versus compassion, and in. Jerusalem, where all the you know the the higher ups and higher of of the church, and that that's where all the the uh, rituals and everything was enforced. Um, they're just there 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 was little compassion, and you had just kind of like we have today. You had your your wealthy. Uh, the the Jewish authorities in Jerusalem. You had the, those wealthy people, um, but there was no love and there was no compassion, um, and there was no concern for their neighbor or or helping anybody else out. So I have this quote from Martin Luther King Jr. and and I I think I think it kind of sums up. Um, so his, his quote is, the first question which the priest and the Levite asked was, if I stop to help this man, what will happen to me? Now, think about that. Uh, ego, ego, um, you know, uh, what's going to happen to me? Um, and I'm I'm having none of it. All right. The good Samaritan then reversed the question. If I do not stop to help this man, what will happen to him? And you can see through this and also what Jesus Jesus taught is that you know we we're here to serve our fellow man. And that's what Jesus was getting at. But mainly, you know, law and even, look, our laws that we make today to, for the most part, are do not consider love and compassion. And, um, it's always well. That's the law. You broke the law. Da 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 da. And fortunately, though, uh, I I I do know there are there are judges. There are people that are coming around to really understand the teachings of Jesus and to show this compassion because it because the law, um, you know, saying the law is the law is 
not necessarily compassion. So, so Jesus defined who the neighbor was in that story. And now we, we need to go, um, we're going to go to the, the Jesus teaching on love your enemies. Okay, Matthew 5, 43 to 45. You have heard that it is said, be kind to your friend and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless anyone who curses you, do good to anyone who hates you, and pray for those who carry you away by force and persecute you. Now, just a couple of things here with this. Uh, you notice it says you have heard that it is said. All right. Uh, and then it says, and hate your enemy. That was not part of the law. Uh, it was part of a an oral um, uh, tradition, an oral idea. And that's what the people thought. Be kind to your friend and hate your enemy. And think about it. Um, we, we may have some of that going on today. Uh, so that's the first thing about that. And, okay, in verse 44, okay, we try, we talked a little bit last night, well, last week about how, well, you know, um, how do you love? How do you love your neighbor? Well, this just tells you, this tells you right here, okay, to love your, your neighbor or your enemy, bless anyone who, bless them, period. Okay, and do do good to them. Don't because you hate them, you're not going to do bad things. Do good to them, all right. And you pray uh, for those. And so that that's a that's just right there in that scripture says um, how um, I mean how you can how you can love your your enemy. Now, the one thing here, and I'm sorry I didn't get the note on there, but. You notice I've highlighted the word perfect. Therefore, become perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Okay, that word perfect in Aramaic, the word is gemira, actually, has different meanings, has several different meanings. And one of those meanings, and we need to substitute it here, and I'll have to do that next time is all inclusive so so when you read this you said therefore become all inclusive just as your father in heaven is perfect uh is all inclusive uh that is a uh, uh that that's a very very um strong uh interpretation and we need to we need to put it out there but uh, and also, if you if you go back before in the scriptures here, if you go back, uh, you will you will see the scripture that says that God's light shines on the good and the bad uh, and all fits with Jesus message. OK. So. um When you love your enemies and pray for those who hate you, you release the potent force that is hidden within every human being. The power of love is stronger than any armor of the flesh. It conquers that which weapons of war have failed to conquer and heals the wounds that refuse healing. These are very strong um, uh, words. Very, very, and that potent force is in all of us. It's in all of us. We're all made in the image and likeness of God. Um, and when, when, when we, we, when we express this love um for neighbor or enemies whatever um it is that 
it is that godlike quality in us uh, that comes out. And the one thing that it's that is not here that doesn't say it, but when you when you um, when you express that love for your neighbor or or for your enemy, the feeling the feeling that you have, the feeling that you get within you is just it, it's really it, it, it's really great. And so if you never considered it um, that way or try to, I, I don't know about all of you, but um, for me, when I, if I, if I do something for somebody else, just, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, it just, it really gives me a great, peaceful, wonderful feeling. Okay, to love your enemy or love your neighbor is to find it in your heart to put aside any wrongs and to love them as a fellow human being. You don't have to love them like you love your parents or your children or best friend. And just a couple of more scriptures here. From Luke 6.35, but love your enemies and do good to them and lend and do not cut off any man's hope. And I, I think that is the key, the, the key here, because I truly believe we do that all the time. Just based on things that we may say, um, <clears throat> uh, if a if, if a person is really thrilled about something that they did, maybe something they created, whatever. And to you, it may not be anything. And just unconsciously, you may make a comment and say, oh, geez, I, that's really, you're cutting off somebody's hope. And I think that's something we all need to, to think about because in our in our our world of of competitiveness and and um, winners and and we we I, I I think I think we do this without even thinking. Okay, and then and then of course we do go back again to the Old Testament. Um, if you meet your enemy's ox or his ass going astray. You shall surely bring it back to him again. If you should see the ass of your enemy lying under its burden and you are unwilling to help him lift it up, you should surely help him to lift it up nevertheless. So you might you might have it in your mind, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to bother that. But you surely must do it compassion okay so and again it was there it was there in in the old testament all the time it's still there um and now we have jesus teachings um and and that and so it's about time it's about time that we uh work on this and love our neighbor love our enemy And basically, this I just use this as a closure. We love our neighbor, and that includes our enemy, when we recognize the love and the presence of God in our lives and the lives of others. If you take the time to look at that person, uh, somebody whom you just you just can't stand, da 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 da, da and if you just take the time to think about, wait a minute, you know, there is good in that person and there is God in that person. It may be hidden. It may be covered up at this time and whatnot, but you consider that and then that will reflect upon whatever you might be going to say or do. 
So that is the conclusion. Next week, we're going to do fear and love. And we hope to see you then.